Hello, and in this uh, tutorial, we're going to be extending the task from the previous tutorial to make it more challenging by adding two distractors that uh, change color on each episode. And we're also going to look at um, how to get more variation in how the, uh, the spheres are randomly placed in the scene through the use of boundary objects. Okay, so let's start by putting two distractors in the scene. And I'm just going to do this by copying the target sphere and we'll put this under the root node and we'll call this uh, distractor zero. And we will also now just copy this and then distractor one, perfect. Let's just drag this to the side and then also drag this one to the other side. And now let's color them slightly different colors just to make it easier to see which one's the target. Okay, and distractor one. Okay, so we have our two distractors in the scene. So now let's get those objects. So distractor zero. Okay, and then distractor one. Okay, so we've got the two distractors as member variables. So now what we want to do is um, color these uh, randomly based on the index that comes in. So what we want to do is make sure that they don't have the same, uh, that the target object is a different color to the destructor objects. Otherwise we could have a task, for example, reach the red target when there's two red uh, spheres in the scene, which we don't want. So what we can do is we can use uh, NumPy for this. And we can say something like color choices and we'll do numpy.random.choice. What we'll do is we'll uh, get the range of the index that's passed in. Uh, so this will give us back a list uh, up until the index. And then what we'll do is we'll concatenate this with another list of the range of of the range of index plus one to the length of the colors list. So what this will give us is a uh, this section here will just give us a list of indices with this actual index removed. This will be a nicer way of doing this, but for the tutorials is good enough. Um, and we want uh, two numbers to be chosen, and we don't want to replace. We want to sample um, without replacement. Post record edit here. This should actually be replace equals false, not true. Okay, um, so what we can do then is color uh, each of those objects. So uh, let's just make a quick for loop. Okay, and to color choices. Okay, so we are looping through the distractors um, and our color choices. And all we're going to do is do object dot set color. And then we're going to index the list of colors that we have. And uh, this actually, this actually returns a, um, a string, a tuple, which has a string and the color. Um, RGB values. We actually want the second element of that tuple. 
Okay, so that should be it. If we now run the simulator and get a episode, remember this is going to be a variation zero, you'll see that the, uh, the two destructors have now got two random colors and the target object remains red. Let's get another episode of the same variation. And as you can see, uh, this, this is a maroon color, by the way, and then a uh, purple. So that looks good. Uh, now let's get a different variation. So this is now going to change the target object to be a maroon. Uh, different variation again. Target object is now lime, and then again, the two distracted objects are different colors. So um, we've got something that works, but the issue is that it's not very challenging because the target object is always in between these two distractors. So it's pretty easy for the agent to work out which, uh, where it should be going. Uh, so what we ideally want is these three spheres to be placed randomly um, anywhere in, the, in, in this workspace. So what we can do, we can make use of something called boundaries. Um, and that just gives us uh, a bit more of an advanced way of, of specifying where things can go in, in this workspace. So what we'll do is we'll add a uh, primitive shape, a cuboid. And what we're going to use, uh, we're going to use this cuboid to specify visually uh, where we want these objects to go. So I'm going to make a relatively big cuboid of 0.5 meters, 0.7 in the y-axis, and 0.5 in the z. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly drag this up. Okay. So this, we don't want this to be um, rendered or anything. This is just like a visual guide for us. So first of all, we'll just pull this to be a uh, child of the root and we'll call this boundary. And uh, we'll make this actually wireframe just so we can uh, see things a bit better. And we'll make sure that it's not renderable, okay? And then we'll just drag this to be roughly in the center of the workspace. Alternatively, I can just look at the uh, position, parent frame, and make it uh, zero on the X and zero on the Y. There we go. So uh, what we want to do is say that these uh, spheres can be anywhere within this um, within this cuboid, and we can do that quite easily. Uh, let's first uh, get a member variable called boundary, and it's a shape, and we called it boundary. And so now what we can do, we can make use of something called a uh, spawn boundary in our bench. And to do that, what we'll do is do b is equal to spawn. Oops. And give it uh, a list of um, boundary shapes that we want to consider. Well, there's only one of them, which is this boundary object. And we'll just import spawn boundary. Okay, so what this uh, gives us is just a really easy way to uh, give this spawn boundary some objects and say uh, that you want to place it somewhere within this uh, boundary uh, at a certain distance from other things that are already in it. So at the moment, when we create it, it's got, uh, the boundary has nothing in it. Um, but what we can do is loop over uh, all of the objects that we want to put in. So we want to put the target in there. We want to put the uh, destructor zero in there, and we also want to put the uh, destructor one in there. And what we can say is uh, b, which is the spawn uh, spawn boundary, not sample. Uh, we want to put the object in there. Uh, let's say that um, we want the minimum distance between the something that's already in the boundary uh, to be about uh, zero point two meters. 
So min distance uh, 0 0.2. We'll set the min. Well, we don't need to rotate this object, so we'll put the uh, min and max rotation to be uh, all zeros. So min rotation, which is going to be just a tuple of zeros. This, these are specified in, in Euler angles. And then also we'll do um, uh, max rotation. So as I said, this is basically just saying uh, only translate uh, within this boundary and make sure that uh, when you put an object into the boundary that you're at least 0.2 uh, meters from any objects that are already in the boundary. Okay, so that looks good. So let's take a look at the task now. So we'll run the simulator and uh, let's get a new episode of a variation. And there we go. You can see now that the objects have been placed randomly within this boundary and we can keep uh, pressing E for a new uh, episode. And what's nice about this boundary, as you can see, is that uh, before it was only uh, translating on the XY plane, uh, because now we're using these boundary objects, we can actually do more compli uh, complicated things about where things can be in the scene. So now it's also translating on the Z. Uh, one thing you may notice is that um, the uh, actual boundary itself is like slightly rotating and moving around. And that's because obviously the uh, root uh, target or, uh, dummy, sorry, the root uh, dummy is always moved at the beginning of the episode regardless. So that's a nice feature to have, but we don't really need it for this. So what we can, can actually do, uh, this is not a necessary step, but it's just nice to do for this particular task, is that we can say that... Um, so there's a, a function we can override is static workspace, and we can just return true. And, and, what, oops, and what that means is that if we now uh, rerun the simulator and now get a new episode, the um, spawn boundary doesn't actually move. So the objects within the spawn boundary obviously move because of, of this sampling function, but the actual boundary itself does not move. And as before, we can get some demos. Oh, so you notice there that there's something we forgot. We, uh, this boundary, as you saw, the, the, the arm went, uh, collided with the boundary. And that's because we did not specify it uh, not to be dynamic or respondable. So luckily we ran the demo there. So let's just run it one more time, get an episode and then demonstration. And there we go.